You see, it's all about a lie and a liar, David and Goliath, and the boy who cried wolf. Can a lie be the truth if the truth was never real? Reality. That's the biggest clue we have about Usopp's devil fruit. Usopp can speak things into reality as if he's a god. That's another clue. Why is Usopp revered as a god? And can God lie? And if he did, would it be the truth? What is the truth? What is reality? What is a lie? What if I told you that reality is neither truth or lie? Reality is the middle way between a truth and a lie. You see, what you know is only known in opposition to what you don't know, just as the truth is only realized in opposition to a lie. Just as the light can only be recognized in opposition to the dark, see what is known in both unknown, that is reality. In the world of One Piece, where everyone's perception of how the world works is essentially a lie, can we trust what we've been told to be the truth? Think about it. Dragon is the world's most dangerous man, but he's a pacifist. The current strongest pirate, Yonko Shanks, is bowing down to the Gorosei. A celestial dragon was killed for being a revolutionary, and the empty throne was never empty this whole time. In the final saga, it seems that everything we've been told about the story is in question. So it gets increasingly difficult to gauge the truth and a lie. My main presupposition as a theorist is that we can no longer trust anything we've been told about this mysterious world of One Piece. And this includes what we've been told about Devil Fruits. I have a theory that Usopp has always had a mythical human model god devil fruit, just like Luffy's Nika fruit. And throughout this whole video, I will prove this using the beautiful relationship between Luffy and Usopp, who I believe to be the representations of the sun and the moon. Luffy being the sun and Usopp being the moon. Stick around for the whole video. And not only will I prove that Usopp has always had a devil fruit, but I will also alter your perspective of the story forever. But before you can understand why I believe Usopp has always had a devil fruit, you must understand all the lies we've been told about the story and about devil fruits. So let me ask you, what do we truly know about devil fruits? We've been told three major things about this mystical power. For one, you lose the ability to swim once you eat it. Two, these dev fruits come in three separate categories, Logia, Paramecia, or Zoans. Three, you must not and cannot eat more than one or you will cease to exist. But what if I told you that there is a classification of dev fruits that has the will to ignore every one of those rules to some degree? And no, not Logias, no, not special Paramecias, and not even mythical Zoans. There is a class of devil fruits that transcend all categorizations and limitations. Yes, I am speaking of the mythical human model god devil fruits, the very same classification as Luffy's sun god Nika fruit. So how do I know that the mythical human god model devil fruits can ignore these rules? Well, what if I told you that two out of three of these rules has already been ignored by people who may have god devil fruits? Which ones? Well, let's start with rule number one. You cannot eat two devil fruits or you may cease to exist. Has that rule already been broken? Yes, it has by Blackbeard who has both the Yami and the Guru fruit. Many people are still wondering how did Blackbeard do this? And most theorists arrive to the common consensus that there must have been a third devil fruit that he ate before the Yami Yami. And I believe this is exactly the case, especially considering that there is no way that Blackbeard would be strong enough to give Shanks that scar without any hidden abilities. No matter what devil fruit you think he has, if it was able to scar God King Shanks, then it must have had the abilities 
of a god. And I doubt Oda would give Luffy a god the fruit without giving Blackbeard one as well. So narratively, it makes sense for Blackbeard to have already possessed a mythical god human fruit. But let's move on to rule number two. A devil fruit either possesses the powers of a Logia, a Zoan, or a Paramecia. That rule has already been ignored by Luffy's sun god Nika Fruit, because Luffy is all of those put together. He has the ability to transform like an animal, but he can also affect his surroundings like a Paramecia, and he is also completely made of rubber, which is a natural element like a Logia. So once again, a god devil fruit is an exception to the rule. This also makes sense narratively because gods are supposed to be boundless and not tied down by rules. So that's two rules already broken that we can observe in the canon story. So what about rule three? If you eat a devil fruit, you lose the ability to swim. Has this rule been broken? Think about it. Has it? What if I told you that it actually has been broken? It actually is happening in front of our eyes every single arc. And guess who it is? It's Usopp. Usopp is the one that has consistently broken rule three. Let me explain. See, many people dismiss the idea of Usopp having a devil fruit because we've seen Usopp swim before. But what if I told you we've also seen him drown a lot more times than we've seen him swim? Yup, you may have missed it, but Usopp has actually drowned in the story in chapter 1061 at the beginning of Egghead, chapter 661 in Punk Hazard, and chapter 618 in Fishman Island, and even far back as chapter 176 in Alabasta. Now let me explain these scenes to you, because the main reason you may have ignored them is because of Oda's sleight of hand and misdirection. Oda is a magician, you see, especially when it comes to Usopp because he has this theme of hiding things about Usopp using Usopp's fear as misdirection. The first example of him ever doing this is when we see Usopp accidentally, quote unquote, shoot down a marine battleship with one shot. The significance of this scene is that Usopp is completely unaware of his strength because of his natural fear, which creates doubt in his self-esteem. Oda writes this in such a way to tell us, hey, pay attention to Usopp because he does amazing things fueled by his hidden potential which he is completely unaware of. Another example of this is in the current story in Wano when Usopp tanks a full-blown OT headbutt. See, the significance of that scene is that Luffy did the very same thing, but of course, Luffy is confident in his strength while Usopp is not. So when Usopp pulls the very same feat he doesn't realize that that was indeed a feat of strength and durability. And even we as the readers fail to understand that Usopp is only weak only due to his mentality. He has never actually been weak, especially when it comes to durability. What sort of weak person tanks a four ton hammer? What sort of weak person challenges Luffy to a fight and actually gets a few hits in? You see, what I mean to emphasize here is that Oda hides Usopp's strength and ability in clever ways, so he does this very same thing in these panels. Let me show you by briefly going through these panels of Usopp drowning. The earliest example of this is in chapter 176 when Vivi and Nami are dragging Usopp out of the water since he seems to have drowned. But if you look closely, it seems he has a lump on his head for us to assume that he was actually struck by something while underwater that led to him passing out. But this is actually crazy good misdirection from Oda because the perfect excuse is that Usopp was drowning in this scene because he's been struck by something. But I know this is sleight of hand because Oda always gives us a clue when he hides these things about Usopp. And here is a huge clue. See, in that very page, there are actually three people drowning in successive panels and two out of three of them being Smoker and Luffy who are drowning because they are Devil Fruit users. 
Oda even goes as far as writing some interesting dialogue here through Sanji. Listen closely to what Sanji says as he is dragging Luffy out of the water. He says, people with devil fruits sure have some rotten weaknesses. Then it literally shows Nami and Vivi dragging Usopp out of the water. Then the very same panel is Zoro dragging Smoker out of the water. Now why would Oda put Usopp in the same condition, same paneling, and same portrayal as two confirmed devil fruit users? It's almost as if he's telling us something. But wait, he does this sleight of hand in Fishman Island and Punk Hazard as well. In Fishman Island, Usopp dipped his head underwater to see what was Zoro doing, and all of a sudden, he drowns in the water. But I know it looks like Usopp was simply scared, didn't it? But look at him, white eyes, mouth open, like a Derefoot user drowning. Coincidence, you say? Okay, let's move on to Punk Hazard when Oda does this very same scene, same patterns and everything. Zoro is fighting sharks again, Usopp ducks his head underwater to see what's going on, and he gets scared, yet his fear is showed as if he's drowning once again. Okay, still a coincidence you say, now let's look at Oda doing this for the third time. In chapter 1061, when the Sunny gets hit by a shark, the straw hats all fall in the sea. Now look at this obscure panel of Usopp once again drowning. But this time, there's less obvious sleight of hand, because he is literally drowning, just like all the Derefoot users, white eyes, mouth open. But this time, did you notice that the cause of Usopp drowning is again because of a shark? Because Oda knows he has sleight of handed you so much that now you would do it to yourself. You would think, no. There must be another coincidence because Usopp drowned because he was once again scared of a huge shark. Or perhaps he is so weak he got shocked by the impact of the sunny capsizing. But this doesn't make any sense because even Nami, who's physically weaker than Usopp, didn't drown. In fact, the only people who drowned were all the devil fruit users. That cannot be a coincidence. Listen to me. Let me break you from this sleight of hand that Oda has been hypnotizing you with. You see, in all three of these scenes with Usopp drowning, a shark was involved. Why? Because a shark represents fear in most people, so you the reader will easily identify with drowning and being shocked by a shark. And just as Oda writes Usopp to seem like a regular human, he makes sure us regular humans will always view him as vulnerable and as weak as we are. But this is definitely a trick because I know none of us regular humans can get hit by four tons of force and get back up. So it makes absolutely no sense that Usopp would drown because of impact or fear. Besides, Usopp has stood up to people far stronger than those sharks. In fact, this makes even less sense when you consider that Usopp's first ever fight was against Arlong Park's minions who were a bunch of strong fishman sharks and he successfully beat one by himself. You get it? Oda is hiding the fact that he drowned using Usopp's fear. But Usopp's fear is not even there. Usopp is not scared of sharks for real. You see, Oda is deceitful about Usopp's character because Usopp is a liar. So the very way that Oda chooses to express Usopp's character and his hidden abilities is through deceitful ways. Just as a magician distracts you with something attention grabbing before they pull something out of thin air, while your attention is focused on Usopp's fear of sharks or the fact that Usopp is weak, Oda uses this as an opportunity to literally show you Usopp drowning again and again and again. And just think about it, even the idea of Derefoot users becoming weak in the sea becomes incredibly hard to see in Usopp because he already believes he's weak. So, he wouldn't even notice himself getting weaker while he's in water. See, Oda is hiding the truth about Usopp in clever lies, 
and fear. And he continuously does this to hide the fact that Usopp has always had a devil fruit from the very beginning. And think about it, why would Oda put that Usopp can predict the future lines of a story as a gag? That is way too powerful and important to the story to be seen as simply a gag. That is literally an omnipotent ability, which I believe has everything to do with the fact that Usopp has eaten a mythical human model god devil fruit. Hmm, you're confused, aren't you? I know in front of your mind, you want to dismiss these panels, but in the back of your mind, you're also thinking, why would Oda draw Usopp drowning like most Devil Fruit users do? Has Oda ever drawn attention towards anyone drowning without them having a Devil Fruit? And now you're thinking of when's the last time you saw Usopp swim. And now you want to pause this video and dive deep into every single time you thought you seen Usopp swim. But after your research, you'll see that he has actually never swam. He's only ever been shown floating above water. But even as these thoughts flood your mind, a strong and prevailing thought remains at the forefront. I bet you're thinking Devil Fruit users shouldn't even be able to float let alone swim. There must be a logical explanation to these panels that doesn't have to involve us jumping to the conclusions that Usopp has a devil fruit. Allow me to propose to you a logical explanation that you must be able to open your mind to understand. See, it's very simple. Remember at the start of this video, I asked you, would God lie? And if he did, would it be the truth? Well, the only way God would lie is if he's a false God, like Emu. I bet you're starting to get it now. What if the swimming weakness of the devil fruits was a lie from the very beginning? And when I mean the very beginning, I mean since the beginning of when devil fruits were made. See, I subscribe to the theory that the original devil fruits were not called devil fruits at all. They were actually called God fruits. I did not make this specific theory and it eludes me as to who's the first to come up with it. But in short, the theory goes like this. Sun God Nika is the original maker of the God fruits. Humans used his fruits as a way to evolve beyond what is natural. But the God of the sea, which is likely Emu, was jealous. Even Vegapunk implies this. Since the sea is the mother of all life and all that is natural, it detested the idea of humans evolving beyond it. So upon defeating sun god Nika, Emu cursed the god fruits to be known as the devil fruits. So that all devil fruit users are weak to the sea and are thus fearful and obedient to mother nature once again. So this theory implies that the original god fruits never had any weaknesses or limitations whatsoever. But my hypothesis, upon Sun God Nika's defeat, he prepared a contingency that as long as you have a human model God Devil Fruit, you can escape the curse of the sea. This is very significant because humans above all animals are always trying to trump nature and evolve beyond it, no matter how scary mother nature is. And if you think about the way we imagine gods, human gods is that they are above nature. They control nature. And as Vegapunk says in his theory about how devil fruits work, is that human desires is what fuels these devil fruits. They think in terms of how can I be like this? What if I can be like this? And that to me is the essence of a prayer, the essence of when you pray to a God and you imagine it as something human that is beyond you and beyond nature. And this I believe is the essence of the human God devil fruits to escape the curse of mother nature's swimming weakness to some degree. So what do I mean by some degree? You see, my hypothesis is that Sun God Nika's contingency is as long as you have a human god that will fruit, 
you can escape the curse of the sea if you have access to the sun, which is Nika's source of power. I believe this is substantiated by the fact that Blackbeard can nullify their fruits using darkness. Just as the further down you go into the depths of the sea, there is less light. Darkness is the real weakness of the devil fruits because the sun can no longer reach you, especially considering that fruits need the sun to grow. So when human god devil fruits are even slightly above water, they can swim and float to some degree because they can negate the weaknesses using sun god Nika's power. But as soon as they go further down in the sea, they immediately drown because it's darker. This is why the clearest example of Usopp drowning is in chapter 1061 where the mechanical shark knocks the straw hats deep into the sea. So I may have blown your mind a couple of times or I may have confused you even more. Now you're questioning what's real or what's false. Or you're trying your best to close your mind to the possibility that Usopp would ever have a devil fruit. I get it. It just doesn't make sense. Besides, why wouldn't Usopp himself know he had a devil fruit? Why wouldn't Oda give us any hints on if, when, or where he's ever eaten one at all? See, that's the thing. We already have a clear hint that Usopp has indeed eaten the devil fruit and we all missed it again because of Oda's clever misdirection. Listen closely. In chapter 47 in Baratie, Sanji and Usopp have a very interesting conversation about mushrooms. Sanji asks Usopp to eat everything on his plate, to which Usopp replies, no, it has mushrooms. I don't like mushrooms since I ate a poisonous mushroom when I was a child. Yes, you're starting to see what I'm getting at here. That poisonous mushroom was not poisonous at all. It was a devil fruit. And as we know, devil fruits are notoriously known for tasting horrible. Yes, you see it now. You get it now. You understand now. Usopp has always had a devil fruit and he's eaten it ever since his childhood and he perceived it to just be a poisonous mushroom. But how am I so sure that this was indeed a devil fruit? And how am I going as far as saying this is a mythical human model god devil fruit? Well, it's quite simple actually. Where else have we seen a mushroom shaped devil fruit in the story? Chopper. Chopper's devil fruit is a mushroom and it happens to be the human model devil fruit. Now, if Chopper is a normal human model, then the mushroom devil fruit Usopp ate must have been another variation, most likely a mythical variation. That's right, Usopp has eaten a mythical human model devil fruit from the very beginning of his childhood, and that also means he's had it from the very beginning of the story, going all the way back to the earliest chapters and he's had it from the whole journey of all his adventures with the straw hats. So how many times have I blown your mind at this point? Let me give you some time to process this. Okay, you had some time? Let's go over what I've presented so far. Number one, human model god devil fruits have been proven to blur the lines of devil fruit limitations and weaknesses, even blurring the lines of being able to swim or float on water. But this is mostly due to Nika's contingency to use the sun as a power source for human god devil fruit specifically to escape the curse of the sea as long as they have access to the sun. Now moving on to number two, Usopp has drowned multiple times in the story when he is underwater, yet he has been able to float when he is above water, which proves that he may have had a god devil fruit. Number three, Usopp's comment about eating a poisonous mushroom has given us a huge clue as to what devil fruit he's eaten and it suggests that he's had it from the very 
beginning. Now stick with me and keep watching, there's only a few minutes because we're about to go even deeper. Hold on to your tin foil hats once again because not only do I intend to prove Usopp has a devil fruit, I'm going to tell you exactly which god his devil fruit is modeled after. And a huge clue is Usopp's ability to turn his lies into truth, effectively manipulating reality. So which gods in the current mythos of One Piece can manipulate reality? We know in the story, Oda has references to Buddhism, Hinduism, Greek mythology, and even Norse mythology since Elbaf has a classical Viking theme. Come to think of it, Elbaf giants have a reference to a god in Norse mythology that can manipulate reality. Who? Well, Loki. Loki is the name of the Elbaf prince that tried to marry Big Mom's daughter and was rejected. So this at least tells me that Loki's name may be bestowed upon him because the giants worship something similar to the Nordic pantheon. So they most likely gave it to him because they fear him, as Loki is portrayed to be a menacing god. And this is reflected by Oda drawing Loki in a menacing silhouette. But here's the thing, I don't believe the character named Loki actually has the Loki devil fruit. I believe it is Usopp that has the god model Loki devil fruit. Why? Well, I believe Usopp's journey and Luffy's journey mirrors one another. How? Well, you see, Luffy just beat Kaido. And this is significant because Kaido saw himself as Joy Boy, aka the only man that can change the world. But he was defeated by the real Joy Boy, Monkey D. Luffy. And Luffy defeated Kaido by unlocking Joy Boy's devil fruit. Then it's miraculously revealed to us that Luffy had a god devil fruit this whole time. In the very same way, I believe Usopp will have the very same journey in Elbaf. I believe Loki will have an ability that Luffy will be unequipped to handle, and it will be Usopp that takes on Loki, utilizing the real abilities of the god Loki devil fruit. You see, I believe the real name of Usopp's devil fruit is the mythical human model, moon god, Loki. So where am I getting the moon part of his devil fruit? You see, Luffy is the representation of the sun in the story, but who is the moon? Many people have said that Blackbeard is the moon, but I think Usopp has a way better case because the sun and the moon must share a relationship just as Luffy and Usopp do. Let me blow your mind. You see, the sun illuminates all just as Luffy gives everyone hope, while the moon casts a shadow just as Usopp is often very negative. The sun represents the truth as it casts a light on everything done in the dark, just as Luffy ruins the plans of dark figures in the world of One Piece. But if the sun is representative of the truth, then the moon is representative of a lie. Because the moonlight is merely a reflection of the sun. It does not have its own light. Thus, it is a lie, and metaphorically, it lies about its own light using the sun. In the very same way that Usopp uses Luffy's reputation to push the narrative that he's really strong. Just really think about it. We, the audience, know Usopp is lying but there is absolutely no indication that the actual people in the story know that he's lying. Like if you were in Wano and you saw this man just magically controlling all your gifters while he's standing there looking menacing and oozing Conqueror's Hockey, although it's a lie from Big Mom's Conqueror's Hockey, you don't know that. You might actually be convinced that this man is an actual conqueror. Well, he is. Anyways, you may actually even be convinced that he's a god. And it's even more believable because he's on a Yonko crew. Everything that Usopp has ever lied about concerning his strength and his status is credible in the eyes of the characters within the story because it is stamped by sun god Luffy. Just as the moon's light is just the reflection of the sun's light, yet it is still admired as a force that is integral to our survival in the dark. 
in a poetic way, Usopp is the moon to Luffy's sun because everything that Luffy is, is what Usopp wants to be. That's why I believe Oda has purposely made their relationship to represent the sun and the moon. And this is substantiated by how Luffy is incapable of telling a lie and Usopp is incapable of telling the truth. They are inverses of each other, yet they are mirrors of the same character. They are both goofy, they are both dependable when it counts, and they are both highly respectful of each other's skill set. It's a common theme in the story that when Luffy is at his lowest, it is Usopp that motivates him to win, just as he did when Luffy was fighting Luchi. And when Luffy and the crew are incapable of beating a tricky opponent, it is Usopp that steps in to save the day, just as he did with Perona and Sugar. Because when the sun sets, the moon rises to keep the night illuminated still. Luffy and Usopp are the yin and yang of the story. They are the relationship between truth and lie, the sun and the moon. You see, if the moon mirrors the sun, then Usopp's future power will mirror Luffy's power up. Just as Luffy awakened the sun god Nikafruit by fighting the fake Joy Boy, but we never knew he even had it, Usopp will awaken the moon god Loki fruit in Elbaf while fighting the fake Loki. And it will be revealed he had it this whole time, right under our nose. But okay, how am I so sure that it's the Loki devil fruit? And if he does have a devil fruit, we would at least have some signs of him using it, right? Well, what if I told you that Usopp has already used his devil fruit in Egghead Island and you missed it again because of Oda's slight of hand. You see the pattern here? Let me explain and let me unveil your eyes once again. You see, in Norse mythology, Loki's powers are magic, shape-shifting, illusion, and even teleportation. So have we seen any signs of Usopp using any of these abilities? Yes, we have. He's actually used his shape-shifting and illusion powers. See, in chapter 1077, S-Snake freezes Usopp, Frankie, and Lilith, and then proceeded to crush Edison's head, causing a huge explosion. But wait, how did they escape that explosion while turned to stone? We know they escaped because we see them perfectly fine in the latest chapter 1090. Remember that Luffy only convinced S-Snake to unfreeze them only after this explosion occurs. So how did they escape this? Remember, when Hancock uses this ability, it makes people's body really brittle so they couldn't possibly be alive unless someone saved them at the last minute. But who could it have possibly been? Everyone was preoccupied. What if I told you that it was Usopp who saved them? What if I told you that Usopp was never frozen from the very beginning? How? Well, you must understand how Esnik's ability works. You see? you must find her adorable for the freezing effect to work. See, it doesn't work on Luffy because he has no sympathy for anyone, not even for little girls, as Vivi had to find out the hard way. So let's think about it. It worked on Frankie as Frankie found her cute. It worked on Lilith, of course, because Lilith pitied her, because she made her. But did it work on Usopp? Does Usopp find her adorable? Does he? because he looks more scared than fearful. Sure, she's a little girl, but she's also a seraphim. And quite frankly, any enemy is scary to Usopp, even little girls, as there is a consistent theme of Usopp beating a little girl who has a very haxed devil fruit in every major One Piece arc. In Thriller Bark, he reverses Perona's negative hollow. And in Dressrosa, he defeats Sugar and reverses her toy devil fruit. And even in Wano, when he survives an OT headbutt, Oda has made it a consistent theme to emphasize that dangerous little girls with their fruits are absolutely no match for Usopp and he never, ever takes them lightly. So not only would he not find S-Hawk adorable, he would find her the opposite. He would actually deeply fear her. 
So there is no way that Esnik's mirror beam affected Usopp in any way. And here's a huge clue. Look closely at how Usopp looks when he's frozen. Can you spot anything out of the ordinary? Look closely. Usopp has a tear in his eyes. No one sheds a tear when they find someone adorable. That, my friend, is a tear of fear. It is much more consistent with Usopp's character to fear little girls as Oda has made this consistent in his character. If you ever look at any victims of the love beam, there has never been a tear in anyone's eyes because that tear is a tear of fear. He was scared, not enamored with her. There it is again, Oda hiding Usopp's abilities using fear. And in this case, his fear and negativity was his biggest weapon, just as it was with Corona. That's right, Usopp was never frozen, but he looks frozen, right? Just like how he looked defeated against Perona, and just like how he looked defeated against Sugar. In these moments against dangerous little girls, he always tricks them into believing their abilities work on him every single time. It's a lie, you see. Usopp looks frozen because he made an illusion that he is frozen using the reality manipulation of the god Loki Devil Fruit. You see, he literally froze up with fear and he activated the Devil Fruit unknowingly. You see, I believe the Devil Fruit uses fear and lying to manipulate reality when Usopp needs to protect himself. This is the perfect devil fruit for Usopp. Think about it, because it allows him to avoid fighting as much as possible and maximize on his sniping abilities. Just think about how dangerous a sniper would be if they couldn't be touched unless you used hockey, or they made illusions of where they actually are, or even illusions on if they've actually been hurt. This devil fruit is perfect for Usopp's versions of fighting and it gives the power necessary to compete in the final saga and be very dependable against the top tiers we will continue encountering. I believe this is also validated in chapter 1089 near the end where we finally see the straw hats and we see Usopp is actually at the front holding the transponder snail next to York and he seems very, very confident as if he was an integral piece of defeating her in the first place. Again, Usopp proving that dangerous little girls like York are absolutely no match for moon god Loki. Yeah, I know that was a really long one guys, but this was a very, very, very ambitious One Piece theory. A lot of research and a lot of time and effort went into this. So if you liked it, even if you don't believe it, can you please like and subscribe? It really supports growing the channel so I can do this more and more and more. And hopefully at some point, I wish to do this full time so I can bring you guys the best One Piece theories ever. Don't you dare leave this video after you spent 40 minutes listening to my voice and not subscribing. I see you. Okay, just kidding. But if you like more of my content and if you like theories such as this, check out how I prove Sanji is a conqueror and also check out how I prove that Kuma is the true mastermind behind the egghead incident. I'll see you there. Middleway out.